Hello there, welcome to the Super Eagles Watch Podcast as we count down to another set of qualifying fixtures for the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations. This is brought to you by Hot Sports, live from the HS Studios in Ikeja, Lagos. My name is Chuma Noli. Delighted to be in the company of this amazing gentleman as I was in his company too a few days back, Wale Adigun. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. Another day, another episode, man. Oh, it's really good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm saying that is because of what the Super Eagles are going through now. Yeah. The last 24 hours have not been the most palatable in the world mm -hmm. really for them by their high standards and the high standards of international relationship as to football. Um, we saw the victory first off. Let's speak about the good news on, on Friday yeah. and the one new success. What did you make of that? Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought it was, it was deserved. Um, I thought the performance was also was, was decent for mm. me, and mm. um, Augusto Negwavoni continues to you know build more um, goodwill and capital for him to get that job on the long run. Um, I thought we played well; mm. we just couldn't get enough goals to be able okay. to you know um, you know buttress that performance. Visayo Delibashiru is one of the players I'm excited about. I've, mm. I've talked about that in, a lot of times. Yeah. I'm always excited about him alongside Rafael Nedika. They came in and, I mean, those changes um, changed the course of the game for mm. us. And um, I just hope that we can keep it up this way. There were concerns why Cerezo used yeah. two defensive yeah. midfielders. Well, see, Cerezo was a defender in his eight days. He's, he's <laughs> safety first. Um, so I don't have any issues with that because mm. there's a tendency the North Africans could lead us, or, you know, soccer punches and stuff like that. And I mean, for all of the antics on the day, mm. It was just important that we, we ended that game with a win. I was happy that we, we got uh, the results. Good news for us. Uh, yeah. We still have not considered a single goal in each of these uh, three games. Yeah. Seven points gotten, four goals scored, none conceded. Impeccable stuff in oh, the yeah. for us. Now we were preparing. Do I say we still are preparing for the return leg um, in Libya? Benghazi to be precise. And then there's all of the drama unfolding in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of those who are joining us and are wondering what exactly is Chuma speaking about, what's been happening, man? Oh, yeah. I mean, the backstory is based on what happened in, in Oyo, uh, where the Libyans were supposed to land in, in Oyo, but mm -hmm. landed in mm -hmm. Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. uh, made a two-hour road trip from Port Harcourt to, you know, Oyo, and yeah. um, they felt hard done uh, by those things. But the NFF clarified that, you know, reported that, and looks like the Libyans set the tone for what was to come, <laughs> you know, in the return leg. And, I mean... The team lands in, in, in Al Abrak airport. They were initially supposed to land in Benghazi, but mid air, the Tunisian pilot has been told to reroute to Al Abrak airport and they land in there and they are locked in the airport. No clearance to be able to make that trip, you know, to Benghazi, which is a three hour, you know, trip uh, by road. Um, the Libyans didn't provide any cushion effects. Oh. Uh, by the way, we did, despite the inconvenience, we provided buses for them. They provided nothing, you know. Um, and as we speak right now, yeah. over 16 hours, the Super Eagles are still locked in that Abrak airport. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really a shame. And if I took the Nigerian community, mm -hmm. you know, in Al Abrak to bring in supplies, bring in internet um, for those players to be able to at least be a bit comfortable. I mean, the pictures have gone viral. Yeah. And yeah. It's, a, it's a harrowing experience. It's horrific. Well, we're seeing a bit of that, really. And a bit, uh, we're going to give you an idea of exactly what things look like um, in that airport. And we saw, you know, pictures of the players of the Super Eagles sleeping on chairs. Uh, William Trusty Kong, the captain of the side, really had to put out a series of tweets saying yeah. um, he's seen things on the continent over the years, but not, not to this level and not to this degree, really. Uh, and it's a shame. And the players at this moment, from a Nigerian perspective, want to withdraw from that game. I know there's also been a statement from the Minister of Sports in the country, um, Senator John Owaneno, who said he's spoken to the President of CAF yeah. and uh, the SEC Gen of CAF as well, and that the priority for Nigeria now is get those players out of Libya. CAF, on the other hand, are insisting that they understand our predicaments, but they're trying to appeal, can you guys just play the match before you go? That's, that's impossible. You cannot play a game under those circumstances from a mental standpoint. From health, I'm even hearing that the uh, health guys, our medical guys, wow. have certified that the players cannot play this game. Yeah. And uh, I've said, hey, the only way is let them come back. I mean, the players are even scared for their lives. I just saw Wilfred in this um, tweet saying, see, this is a whole state situation and he's scared for everyone's lives. Victor Boniface also has been, yeah. you know, tweeting as well. And, and, you know, they are worried right now to the extent that clubs 
are now sending private jets to come pick these players in Benghazi. But guess what? These players don't even have the clearance to leave the Alhabra airport and go to Benghazi. That's how bad it is. Scary stuff, really. Let's uh, give you a bit of an insight into how things look beyond my description and that of uh, Wale Adigun. I think you can see things for yourself now. And then we'll return and look at the reality of the possibility of that game happening. If it doesn't happen, what could actually take place, whether it's sanctions to Libya or sanctions to Nigeria from CAF's perspective? We'll be back shortly. All right, you've seen things for yourself, really. If you notice, I'm a bit downcast and not sounding as excited as I would sound lovely because it's a shame that we're having these happen on the African continent. It's been a consistent complaint, more so from the northern African, uh, northern part of the continent, as the case is. Anybody experienced this too uh, some years back, and Wally will be telling me about that shortly. But please uh, subscribe to our channel. Yeah, I need to get excited right now because every time we come around here for the Super Eagles World Podcast, the excitement just keeps building around the place. We have that desire to consistently ensure that you're up to date with everything happening in Nigerian football from a positive perspective and otherwise. So please just click on that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, you can follow us across other social media platforms to X and also Instagram. Yeah, it is hot sports NG for us. And while I'm forcing this smile off, off my face now, um, it's a shame this is happening. And mm -hmm. there's even the story of three years ago. If this is 12, 13, 14 hours for Super Eagles players, for him, it was like 24 hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, um, it was also in the same city of Benghazi, hmm. Halali, Benghazi. And so 24 hours they were locked in the airport. So, Oops. I mean, there's history here. Rivers United also suffered the same, I think, Al Nasser. Um, the, no, it wasn't an airport episode. It was mm, mm, mm. the pitch. They switched off the lights <laughs> of the training. stadium while they were training. So there is consistent history. I mean, the Libyan Football Federation said that you cannot land in Benghazi. But guess what? Mm. Sudan... Mm play their own games mm. in the Afghan qualifiers mm. in Benghazi mm. and Sudan and Ghana landed in Benghazi yesterday. <laughs> so why couldn't the Super Eagles land in Benghazi? Now I'm also hearing mm -hmm. that the Libyan authorities have granted clearance for the Nigerian contingent to leave El Abrak and go to Benghazi. So why are you telling them to go to Benghazi today when you couldn't allow them going there yes, yesterday? Sir. They've put out the statements, yeah. I think 17 hours after this whole episode, mm. and they are expressing their displeasure, whatever, but it looks like crocodile tears, honestly. Man. And Man. It's, it's, it's really a shame. And the only way here yeah, is for these boys to really come back. And the question is, we are not even sure about the safety of this team. Because again, we know that Libya as a country, unfortunately, since after the exit of Gaddafi, who also died in the process of uh, that protest. Civil war, yeah. Um, the country has not been the same anymore. So there's also the whole talk of insurgency in certain parts of Libya, fear of kidnapping and all of those kind of conversations, which is scary. These were the words of the Minister of Sports um, in the country who, who, of course, put out a very strong statement earlier today. I just want to share word for word um, a part of that from him. And he said, the national team was en route to Benghazi, but was diverted on approach to the airport and all of those. Now, as sports minister, I've instructed the NFF president to lay formal complaints to CAF without prejudice to any actions already taken. Then he went on to add, this morning I was on a conference call with CAF president and CAF secretary general. While the CAF president's concern seems to be what to do to get the national team to participate in tomorrow's match, I have instead informed CAF that the concern of the government and people of Nigeria is first, the safety of the team, and their safe return. So from CAF's POV, they know what we're going through is a terrible situation. Yeah. But they are also saying, please guys, can you just play this game because we don't have the luxury of time for another window. The Nigerian government is saying, Super Eagles players come back home. Let's imagine the Nigerian government has her way and the players come back, which is more likely than not what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. 
what's happening next from a CAF perspective? Because there are going to be conversations around sanctions, man. Yeah, uh, and I mean, your initial yeah. thoughts on, yeah. on CAF saying, can we have this game go on? It tells you where the game is right now. The game has lost its humanity. Because, yeah. because CAF should be much more bothered about the state of those players, mm. not about the state of the qualifiers. Mm. Because when it comes to cases like this, the first thing you think of is the human beings, is yeah. the guys, because the players are even the key actors. Mm. Without the players, there's no AFCON. True. Without the players, there's no qualifier. But guess what? They are thinking about the logistical nightmare <laughs> that they are going to have if this game is up late, because obviously there's no space in the yeah, window. The AFCON yeah. qualifier is wrapping up this year. There's a club World Cup coming up next year as well. <laughs> AFCON was even that shifted. World Cup qualifier next year as well. Yeah, exactly. The AFCON was even shifted or pushed to December to accommodate the club World Cup. I can understand all of that. But the first thing for Patrice Mosebi has to be how are these players faring? Mm. You know, it should be a word from CAF condemning what is happening. Go to CAF's Twitter. They're only tweeting about the qualifiers coming up today. Kenya, Cameroon, Eswatini, Mozambique, or whatever. <laughs> they should be putting out a statement and condemning what is currently happening in Libya. But what are they after? Can we play this game tomorrow? It's a shame. But like you said, yeah, what happens? Moving forward, yeah. The true matter is if you're going to go with the letter of the law, the Super Eagles will be stripped of three points and three goals. That's the truth. Because CAF will have said, Libya tried to ensure this game went on. Mm. They provided a boss after all. Wow. We also persuaded you with the sports minister, all to no avail, and we are left with no other decision than to go with the letter of the law, and that's three points. And honestly, I don't have any big any issues with that. Yeah, yeah. Strip over, the most important thing is this players come back in safe. We are still in a good position, even if you strip us of those three points. Just that, yeah. if we had won this game, yeah, we'll yeah. have been very much assured of good. qualification yeah. you know, yeah. for the AFCON. Yeah. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. If CAF go ahead, because I'm hoping yeah. that CAF also will send out a very heavy message to Libya because of what has happened. Well, I hope really this does happen because we're not too excited as Nigerians right now seeing our national team being uh, harassed this much in uh, the northern part of the continent, Libya, to be precise this time around. But as things stand, it is Nigeria's Super Eagles on seven points from three matches. They're yet to concede a single goal. Benin Republic are second in that group. They have six points. Libya, who are going through this uh, challenge uh, with our national team right now, where they do have just a point from three matches. So even if they were to be given three points by CAF, they'll be on four, which will still be three points behind Nigeria's Super Eagles. These are all conjectures. We'll have to watch this space and update you certainly right here on the Super Eagles Watch podcast as the days come and go as to the reality of this qualifying series for the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations. While it's not been the most... Uh, the happiest moment for us oh, yeah. as, as, uh, as Nigerian uh, football as fans. But you can drop your comments actually on uh, the comment section. Also, please subscribe to our channel and uh, follow up with uh, what's happening. We're going to be here to keep updating you, all right? So just subscribe to the channel and uh, follow us on uh, X and on Instagram, uh, Hot Sports NG. That's what we're all about promotion of Nigerian football and celebrating the African game as well. Wale, thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, it's just great to be uh, here. I was going to ask yeah. you, you know, on a good day, your prediction for the match, but right now, as we speak, yeah, whatever no, no. setting the game is going to happen. Our prediction is when, when are they coming back? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. All right, take care.